We, we made, made it to 10K! 10K. <laughs> Listen, I know I've been super annoying every single video asking you guys to sub, but it paid off. We finally made it to 10K subs, and it's even still going after that. You guys are still doing it. You don't have to, but we're very happy. We finally made it to a point where we can do two videos a week. I was in the UK last weekend with other content creators setting up a second studio so that we can finally have the resources to deliver this to you. We promised it, we're doing it. Yeah, additional videos. That being said, more subscribers still make it easier to justify, you know, getting additional equipment, all that kind of stuff. Better guests. Better guests. I mean, we already have. Yours truly. <laughs> Anyways. This week, we picked YouTube comments from last week's videos that contain decks and we played those decks. So if you want to see a specific deck, just leave it in the comments below and we might pick it for next week. But let's see what we picked this week. Let's get into the games. So last week, a lot of you asked for Abza Midrange, which I haven't played ever since Siege Rhino became irrelevant. But Midrange decks are kind of cute and Modern Horizons 2 has had some good cards for Abza. So I went with the deck. The card I'm looking forward to playing with the most is Dothy Voidwalker, which is so cool because it lets you grab your enemy's cards and play with them. So I really hope Carl brought something along the lines of Tron or something where I can grab a huge card to play for free. I was gonna play Boggles this week, but then I saw in the comments that someone asked for Pons and whoa, I was hit by a wave of nostalgia. This deck only gets a few extra additions from the recent sets. You get two Ignoble Hierarch and two Fury from Modern Horizons 2. But the point is you play some cards like Pillage or Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon to restrict their mana and prevent them from casting their spells. And you just shut the door with some heavy hitters like Chandra, Torch of Defiance, Clothis, Glory bringer. I'm just really excited to play a bunch of cards that I've just loved through the history of magic and just beat face, turn creatures sideways. Yemen, <laughs> take off your gloves, it's time to fight. All right, let's go. Uh, first off, time, roll. To, time to roll fine. two dice. That's You rolled one average. really well and run rather poorly. Oh, yeah. oh, I rolled one really well and one a little less poorly than you do. All so, right. I will go first. You will go first, and I'll declare Lurus my companion. Okay, that could be one of many things. Oops, also, you didn't see my sideboard there. <laughs> no, no, I did not. Not at all. I saw a black card, but Lurus is black. Oh, but you, that means you're not playing Hammer Time. Good luck, have fun, though I doubt you wouldn't. You're a fun-loving guy, Yaminkov. I am a fun-loving guy. I will hella keep. Now this is probably the best kind of hand we could ever imagine. Unless Yamin is playing a Lightning Bolt deck, we get to play turn one Arbor Elf into turn two Clothis and Lightning Bolt. I don't even know if we'll have a Lightning Bolt target. I might target myself out of my own excitement, but it's just a really good turn. It's really hard to deal with a Clothis on the board. I'll keep two. So I'm keeping this hand, which is kind of risky because it only has one land, but I'm on the draw and I have the redraw of the bubble, so how could this ever go wrong? Okay, so may I commence? You may begin the game. I will go to 17 by fetching with a Missy Rainforest. I will get a Stomping Ground, untapped. Are you checking yourself in the mirror? I, I am uh, checking in the, mirror, in the, in the, camera. In the camera. I am checking myself out. Or in the eyes of the viewer, in their reflection. I will play this Arbor Elf. That's scary. That is. Carl opening with Arbor Elf might be a very bad sign if he's playing land destruction, Ponza, red, green things, but maybe there's another deck that plays Arbor Elf? Please? <laughs> Come on, Carl, you didn't bring an anti-fun deck. Maybe it's fun for me. I, I, did, I, did, I came here to play Magic. I didn't come here for you to play Magic. I see. Is it my turn though? Yes, it may, is your may turn. May I play some Magic? All right, I'll take a draw, and I'll also go down to 17. Oh. I'll grab an Overgrown Tomb and pay two. So I'm down to 17. 17. And I'll play an Ignoble Hierarch. Battle of the Mana Dorks. Go ahead. Oh no, actually don't go ahead. I'll play a Mistress Bubble. <laughs> that was oh, close. Oh, go with your list. That was, that was so close, you almost missed playing your... Uh, would you like to do anything before my turn? Uh, I would not. Okay, I'll untap. I'll draw. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy, but this turn is going to be what some people call hot sauce. I would like to... Fetch, going down to 16. You wouldn't have the nuts, forest. would you? Uh, actually, this turn's gonna be really good. No. Um, I am going to play a red Utopia Sprawl here. Okay. Tap it for green red. Yeah. Untap it. Yep. Tap it for green red. 
That sounds disgusting. Play a Clothis. That's... With the remaining red, I would like to Lightning Bolt your Iggy. Whoa! <laughs> that turns! <laughs> Whew! Uh, all right, that hierarch is gone. I'm actually, you see this? This is, this is chills. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, that was a good turn. Um, and I will pass the turn over to you. Turn two, Clothis, and bolt my hierarch? That's not looking good. Uh, at the end of turn, I will Mistress Bobble you. That's a very mysterious card. Yeah, right. okay, good. Yeah. I will untap. Yes. And in my upkeep, I'll draw an additional card off the bubble, and then draw my card for the turn. This, this is going to be interesting, Carl. <laughs> I'll play an ignoble hierarch. Not another one! And then I'll pass the turn! Oh, I am so sorry! <laughs> oh, it's alright. I feel so bad! Uh, it's okay, This Carl. is all my fault! <laughs> <laughs> it is! <laughs> I would like to untap! Yes. I will exile your bubble. It is successfully exiled. This will bring me up to 18, and you will go down to 15. Yep. I will draw for turn. I will play three. three. I will cast a Blood Moon. Uh, yep. I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, don't be sorry. Um, I will attack for one. Hmm, should I block? <laughs> the damage is rolling. 14. 14. And then... Play Mountain and Pass. All right, I will untap. Yes. I'll take my draw. All of my deck's answers to Blood Moon are white, and I'm only running a single basic planes in the list, which I didn't fetch out earlier, so this is looking terrible. I will play a Tarmogoyf. Oh, at least you get to cast that. I, at least I get to cast that. That's currently a 3-4. And then I'll play a Mishra's Bobble. And I will pass the turn. Up. Trigger, I will eat the Hierarch. 2012. Uh, that's with my Clothes trigger. Yep. I will draw. Oh no. Um, I was just thinking how I really needed some action. And you drew some action. I'd like to cast a Chandra Torch of Defiance. That, that's, that's some action. Oh, that is so much action. <laughs> also, it turns on my Clothes. Yeah, that's a lot of devotion you got there. That is precisely seven. I mean, I know I've won, I just need to figure out how I do this. You can taste your victory a bit longer. You can keep it in your mouth, you know. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so gross. <laughs> um, I'm really inclined to just destroy the Hierarch here to prevent him from having any mana source and just preventing him from playing any spells for the rest of the game. And then he could attack it down with Tarmogoyf, I could swing back, but I don't have any gas in hand. And if he top decks a few lands, he could just crawl back into this. So I think if I kill the Tarmogoyf, I can finally put on enough pressure. Just hope he doesn't draw any basic lands. I mean, I've been thinking about turn three so long that this permanent's been waiting since the dark. <laughs> it's been decades! <laughs> Um, I, I have come to the decision that I think I will deal four damage to your Tarmogoyf. It's gone. And then I'll swing at you for five. I'm down to seven. Down to seven. Pass the turn. Look, I'll, I'll just see what's coming, right? Okay. What's coming? Um, oh, you knew what, you knew about the Chandra? No, I knew about the Blood Moon. I didn't know uh, about the Chandra. It's still a banger. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, can I put it back? Yeah, you can put it back. I'll move into my turn. Yes. I'll untap. And I'll take an extra draw off the bobble. I'm not sure if that matters. And then a regular draw. I'm at seven. You are. I have plenty of options in my hand. I'll Inquisition of Kozilek you. Okay, you said I came here not to play magic. Yeah, but neither of us here came <laughs> here to play magic. You don't want me to have a hand. I don't want you to have lands. You are going to get rid of my extra Clothis. All right. And then I'll pass the turn. I will untap. Yep. Draw. Yep. Swing for five. Down to two. Take up Chandra. Yep. For two damage. Yeah, it, it, well, I'm dead either way. Next <laughs> Let's go to game two. Yeah, man. What do you like to do in your spare time? Good that you ask, Carl. In my spare time to relax, I pour myself a nice glass of champagne and I sit there and browse the inventory of Karma Crow. Well, that makes a lot of sense because with over 700,000 cards, they're almost certain to have all the cards in your order. So if you order them from them directly once, you only pay shipping once and save a ton of money. You can do that too. There's a description in the link below. If you click, 
Just enter all the cards you need, order them one place. If you're in Central Europe, they'll be in your house within three days. That's pretty sick. But for now, let's get into game two. With the cards they lent us. Okay, sideboards. I'm gonna take out one Magus of the Moon because it's the only Blood Moon in my deck that he can actually remove with instant speed spells because he can just float the mana and kill it with maybe a Fatal Push. I'm going to also bring out two Pillage because on the play, I can get under his spells and prevent him from casting them. But on the draw, sometimes he's just gonna play something I can't deal with. And I'd much rather have most other things than a Pillage if I'm already having to deal with what he has on board. So we're gonna take those out. We're bringing, out two, bringing in two Veil of Summer. One is because it protects us from his discard spells, but also he has a lot of removal and we might want to protect our spells our threats. It's just all over the board pretty good. And we're also bringing in an Endurance just because it's a solid beater and he does have a lot of graveyard interactions and has a Luris, so sometimes flashing it in will just reduce a Tarmogoy for something of the like. My sideboard is terrible against Ponza because who's playing Ponza anyways? Anyways, what I will side out are the slow, clunky, and useless cards. And what I will side in instead are the Knight's Whispers, which will help me find the actual useful cards, as well as a single dam, because me going first, I can actually dam an Arbor Elf on turn two. So game two. Yeah, game two time. I uh, hope your sideboard is awesome. It is. Uh, actually, it's not, let me tell you. <laughs> Luris is still my companion. Okay, that has not changed. And I will go first. All right. I will be keeping this hand. This is the kind of opening hand we want to see. Turn one Inquisition can take whatever we want, and then turn two Prismatic Endin can take out an Utopia Sprawl or a Mana Dork, and then even more interaction to follow it up. I will keep it as well. All right. Now this is a really good hand. Since he's on the play, I am. if he has a Thought Seize, it's gonna be cast on turn one. So I'm not gonna keep up the Veil of Summer. I'm probably gonna want in and play the Utopia Sprawl so that I can just, if he doesn't have any hand disruption, turn two Clothis and just ride that to victory. Anyways, this hand has a lot of angles of attack. Snap key. So Yamin, show me what you got. I got a bobble. Is that? You had that last game as well, didn't help you. It didn't help me. I'll bobble you. All right, uh, you may put that back. And I'll follow it up with a Godless Shrine, paying two. Oh, Down I two. know what that means! Same thing as last game, though this game, this one might actually help me. An Inquisition of Kozilek. Yeah, I mean, you're too fast. You're like the speedy Gonzalez of the hand disruption. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to take the Veil of Summer. Okay. And that concludes my turn. During your upkeep, I would like to draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will draw? Yeah. I'm gonna play the Utopia Sprawl over the Ignoble Hierarch here, because although both of them get hit by Prismatic Ending, he's definitely bringing in at least post board some Fatal Pushes, and that can only hit the Hierarch, so it gives us more chance of untapping and then casting Clothis. I'm going to do a fetch, taking one. 19. I'm gonna get a basic forest and enchant it. It's an enchanted forest uh, with the Utopia Sprawl. Sure. Pass the turn. All right. I'll untap and I'll take a draw. So my initial plan for my turn two was to disrupt Carl's turn one play, but with the Void Walker, that one might actually be better. All right, I've come to a conclusion, Carl. Okay. Um, I'll sacrifice my Marsh Flats. Oh, yep, are you going to 17 it's or? 17 it is. Oh, okay, playing around that Blood Moon. Maybe. Maybe this <laughs> is it? Maybe I'm playing around Blood Moon, because that card is scary, you gotta admit it. Yeah, that, car that card just ended the game last turn. Uh, I'll get a Swamp, and then I'll cast a Dothy Voidwalker. Ooh, would you like to read me what it does? It has shadow, so it's basically unblockable and it can't block. And whenever any card goes into your graveyard from now on, it gets exiled with a void counter, and I may sacrifice it uh, once to choose any exiled card uh, with a void counter on it, and I may play that card without cast uh, without paying its mana cost. That is quite good. That is very powerful. That was a new lot of text to read. Too. Yeah. Yeah, new addition from Modern Horizons 2. I really love this card because it's like a high roll card, like, oh, snap your car in or... Or like get an Emrakul, yeah, it's... Or if you take it from my hand. Exactly, that's the plan. Very powerful. Go ahead. And tap, draw. Well, I had other plans, but this just changed them. Uh, didn't get a babysitter for my 
for original plans. So I'm going to lightning bolt the Dothi White Walker with the red. That makes sense. And use the green to cast the fanciest ignoble heroic I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. Old Border <laughs> Foil? Karma Crow! Roll him in my yeah. us. <laughs> Karma Crow treating us well. I'm sure there's somewhere in a 50 cent song. I'll play this uh, Missy Rainforest and pass the turn. I would have liked to keep that Void Walker, Carl. Of course you would. <laughs> I haven't found a land yet, but I have found a Knight's Whisper, which might help us get there because we really need to get ahead with mana. If we find a land, we might even get to cast the Ignoble Hierarch. I will cast a Knight's Whisper. Okay, so you lose your life and draw two cards. Exactly. 15. One, two. That's card advantage. It is. And I will play a Verdant Catacombs. Mm -hmm. I'll fetch. Okay. 14. 14, and I'll stay at 14, only getting a forest. Which will then cast an Ignoble Hierarch. Oh, twins! Twins! Though it's yours like the, is much yeah, it, fancier. It's like when you come back to town and there's the brother who stayed in town and his much more successful brother. <laughs> uh, it's, or, it's Daniel I'll, and the cooler Daniel. <laughs> Daniel? Do, do you know the... Uh, it's, it's a meme. It's a meme, Carl. Uh, I'm not in with the kids. Uh, you're not hip with the kids. Go ahead. I will fetch. Sure. 18. Get a stomping ground. Untap. Draw for turn. Yep. I will fetch. 17, get in a forest. You know what's coming? It, it smells like a blood moon, but I assume it's just a blood braid elf. It's a blood braid elf that might turn into a blood moon. Still has a lot of things to do with blood. Everything has to do with blood. Yeah, I, I, am I playing blood crypts? I don't know, I, I feel like the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this blood braid elf better not hit any land destruction or blood moons, please. Um, sorry, flipping? Yep. Oh. That's a good one. That's a seasoned pyromancer. That's a seasoned pyromancer. So as it enters the battlefield, bye Clothis. I'll discard two cards. Yep. Make two elementals. Oh, my board just got real busy. Yeah, your board got No huge. social distancing. Uh, draw two cards. Yep. Uh, that's what I call a downgrade. I'm going to... I'm going to declare tax. Yeah. Get in at ya. All right, I'll go down to 10. Go down to 10. This does no longer attack, and I'll pass the turn over to you. All right, I'll untap, and I'll take a draw. So first things first, I'll cast an Inquisition of Coast Black. Uh, my misfortune is shared by you as well then. I say, all right. I just got two lands of the Pyromancer. Yeah, you can't take either of them. I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, you're still like <laughs> trying to decide which land. Uh, no, I was I was trying to decide my next. Yeah, yeah, I play. figured. Uh, <laughs> you are a far better player than someone who'd assume you could take a, who uh, someone who would not read your card. I guess with your hand being the way it is, I will pay one to prismatic ending the utopia sprawl. Okay. That's gone. And then I will pay two to deploy a Tarmogoyf. Uh, do you want to do a quick Tarmo count? Oh, of course. Creature, enchantment, land, and instant on my side. That's and, four. Yeah, and I've got artifact and sorcery, so it's a six, seven. Whoo, it's a big one. It is a big one, and I'll also play a Verdant Catacombs. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. How do I ever get through that giant Tarmogoyf? Well, this is a start. I'll play my mountain. I will tap four to class another Bloodbraid Elf. Okay. So this game we prepared for Blood Moon with basics, but Bloodbraid Elf still putting a lot of pressure on me here. I get a Blood Moon. So before the Blood Moon resolves, yes. I will crack this for the catacombs going down to nine. Okay. And I will grab myself a swamp. This will enter. It does. 
All right, after this, we're completely out of gas. We don't have anything left. So what we're gonna have to do is put Yaman's life total so low that he's forced to do suboptimal plays in order to defend himself. So I know it's card disadvantage, but we're gonna attack with everything, even if something gets gobbled up. Okay, I hope your Tarmogoyf is hungry, because I'm gonna start feeding creatures to it. I'll attack with... Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. I'm too, too quick, Carl, I'm too quick. <laughs> um, so you'll take five, six, seven? Yep, go down to two. Pass the turn to you. All right, I'm gonna need some goodies here. I'll take a draw. Uh, that's... Let's me stay alive. I will play a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I will pay three to put Lurus into my hand. Okay. And I'll cast a Lurus. Do you have a bubble in your graveyard? Oh, you do have a bubble in your graveyard. I do have a bubble I in my I saw a bit of your sideboard. Yeah. Oh, gonna... I saw what you didn't bring in. Uh, I'll, I'll cast my bobble okay. from the graveyard. And then I'll pass the turn. I'll untap. Yes, this does allow you to stay alive. I'll draw. No whammies? <laughs> no whammies. I'll play this mountain. Because now you, this changes the whole math. Well, I mean, it doesn't change math itself, but it does change the combat math. Like, <laughs> Imagine our game was so good, it changed math. <laughs> Physicists hate them! <laughs> uh, no, let, let's, let's rely on this math for a sec. Okay, it's gonna suck, but we're gonna have to attack into his Lurus and his Tarmogoyf here. There's an alternate timeline where Yaman untaps and then either draws two cards a turn because of the bobble, gets a Dothly Voidwalker in play, and then he just snowballs out of control. So we're, this is our last window to get an attack in that forces him to block with Lurus. Now, if no, we can't attack with everything because then he could just block one of the elemental tokens, still gain three life and still have Alurus and just beat us from there. So we'll just throw our best creatures into the fray. So I think I'm going to attack with these two. Yep. That's how one attacks. Um, yeah, if I attack with the elementals, you can block, gain life. Yeah, my Alurus doesn't and die. still not die. This way my Alurus dies, Carl. Come yeah. on. Uh, my, my biggest creatures do as well. But yeah, I'm, I, we're going to have to do it that way. Yep. Uh, you go up to five. Indeed. These both die, mine dies here. And post combat, I'm going to make two one ones. Sure. Elementals. Uh, by exiling my Pyromancer. Pass the turn. At end of turn, I will bobble you. All right, you may put that back. I'll go into my turn. Okay, go ahead. Untap, I'll draw an extra card for the bobble. Those aren't very useful. Uh, that's bad news for me. I'll play a mountain. You're welcome. Comes to plan to happen. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You have currently more information than I do. That will change immediately. That's very good. I'll play this mountain. Yes. I will play a pyromancer. Yet another one. I'll draw two cards. Yep. You've got two cards in hand. I do. I'll declare attacks. Yep. Swing for four. I guess I have to block one. Yep. You go down to two? Yep, good. down to two. And post combat? Yep. I will put a Utopia Sprawl on my forest, naming green. All right, sounds reasonable. And pass the turn to you. All right, I want to draw something good, please. <laughs> something. All right, that is not anything, but I, I think we're still in this. <laughs> okay. Well, um... You can still grip back. I think your individual cards might be stronger than mine. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have white mana, Carl. That's, <laughs> uh, that's something we have in common, because you also don't have access to <laughs> yeah, white I, mana. I didn't come with white. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll damn... A season pyromancer. Okay. And then that's your turn. I'll untap. Draw. Declare attack. Sure. Swing with the knucklehead brigade. I'll, I'll block two. The you'll block two. You'll take one. I go down to one. Going down to one. This dies. Yep. That dies. 
And then I'll pay five. Yep. Exile my Pyromancer and get two more spicy boys. Are they spicy? Look at them. Uh, I mean, yes, they are very hot. They look like they're made of hot sauce. Go ahead. All right. Untap. Take a very good draw. I'm it has, telling you. It has to be really good. It, 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 I'll put a Night's Whisper onto the stack. Does that do anything? Yeah, but I came here with a gl glory bringer in my deck because I wanted to play a glory bringer. And now you didn't even get to. And now I don't even it. get to get there. All Lock. right, good games. Good games. <laughs> Carl, couldn't you at least let me play Magic? I've got so many cool cards in the deck, and I can't cast them if I don't have usable lands. Well, if I don't let you play Magic, it lets me play even more Magic. So for me, it's basically a your, win. Your share of the Magic pie goes up. <laughs> That's bigger, yeah. <laughs> So you guys, while you're at it, please, before the end of the video, I'm just reminding you guys that we pick the decks that we play from the comments you leave below. So just scroll down a little bit, leave either an exact deck list or an archetype, and we might play it for next week. Also, while you're there, I know we got to 10K, but maybe there's a world in which we make it to 20K. So if you're not subscribed, it costs you nothing to click that button, and it means the world to us. There's always room for more subscribers. That being said, for now, it's time to say goodbye, and see you next week. See you next week.